two, and we're ready. The appointed hour of six o'clock having been reached, I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge, a ZBA chair of the meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access, access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, the meeting is recorded and may be viewed on the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and the ZBA webpage. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. We will begin with a roll call of the ZBA members and panel for tonight's meeting. Steve Judge is present. Ms. Parks? Here. Mr. Maxfield? Here. Mr. Meadows? Here. Uh, Mr. Gilbert is not here. That gives us a panel of four, a quorum sufficient for doing business uh, as the uh, ZBA. Also attending the public meeting is Maureen Pollock, planner with the town, and Rob Mora, the building commissioner. Is there anybody else from the town staff that's going to be on here? Nope. All right. Thanks, Maureen. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold a public hearing where information about the project and input, input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing of the variance to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed in the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with a town clerk, there is a 20 day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with a relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, a public meeting, on ZBA FY 2022-18. Joel Greenbaum, for the review and approval of the updated site plan, building elevation, and photometric plan relative to changes to the height of a wall, mounted light fixture, and changes to the driveway width from 17.7 .7 to 18 feet wide, and review of approval of submitted basement floor, pursuant to conditions two, three, and four of the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2022-14, located at 77 North Whitney Street, Map 14B, Parcel 98, General Residence, RG, Zoning District. Public hearings on ZBA FY 2022-16 and ZBA FY 2022-15, Killerine Properties, LLC, doing, in care of Valley Property Management, requests a special permit to allow a non-owner-occupied duplex 
and to request a special permit to extinguish the previously approved ZBA FY 1992-52 special permit under section 3.3211, 10.33, and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at 80 Pine Street, map 5A, parcel 86, neighborhood residence, RN zoning district. This matter is continued from our June 23rd meeting. And ZBA FY 2022-17, CNS Home Solutions LLC, we requests a special permit to allow an increase of the number of residential units, converted dwellings from one to two under section 3.3241, 7.9, 9.22, and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at 485 Pine Street, map 6A, parcel 38, neighborhood residence RN zoning district. Following those matters, there will be a time for general public comment on any matter that is not before the board tonight as well as any other business not anticipated within the last 48 hours. The first order of business, oh, before we go to that, are there any disclosures for any of the matters on the uh, agenda tonight? If not, the first order of business is ZBA FY 2022-18, Joel Greenbaum, for the review and approval of the updated site plans, building elevations, photometric plan rel relative to changes to the height of a wall mounted light fixture, and change in the driveway width from 17.7 to 18 feet wide, and review and approval of a submitted basement floor pursuant to sections two, three, conditions two, three, and four of the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2022-14, located at 77 North Whitney Street, map 14B, parcel 98, general residence, RG zoning district. Um, the items we have, uh, submittals we have from the applicant include um, a, we've got a site plan modification for the driveway. We have the, um, I thought we had the light fixtures and also we have the basement floor pan. Do we have light, did they submit a cut sheet on light fixtures? Or did they just change, they just changed uh, the height? So they just it, changed yeah, the height. Yeah, it's the same um, light uh, fixture type. Yep, but it's just changing height. Okay. Um, Mr. Maxfield, you were the, you chaired, I think the hearing on this. Uh, do you have anything that you wanna add or? Um. No, I think it pretty much covers it. I think it's just a review of, of those things for the board to see. Yep. Um, Great. And uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we have Chris Farley, rep, uh, the architect, uh, representing the applicant tonight. Sure. Mr. Farley, do you want to uh, um, give your name and address and introduce yourself to the board for the record and then proceed to explain briefly um, the changes required by the conditions two, three, and four. Uh, of course, thank you very much. Um, my name is Chris Farley. I'm an architect with Kuhn Riddle Architects, uh, 28 Amity Street um, in Amherst. And um, uh, the, the, the listing of those three modifications uh, is, is complete. Uh, we are uh, uh, making the, the width of the driveway compliant. Uh, we've lowered the lighting fixture, uh, building mounted lighting fixture from uh, just under 20 feet to 12 feet above grade. Uh, and we did include the, uh, the basement floor plan on the architectural sheet for reference. Um, I, I, I think it's as straightforward as that, but I'm happy to answer any questions uh, the board may have. Thank you, Mr. Farley. Um, any okay. questions from... Any questions from members of the board? Seems pretty straightforward. Um, yes. Um, something came up uh, about um, a new re the requirement from the state to put in <clears throat> um, charging stations and allocate spaces for um, electric vehicles. Is I, I realize that that wasn't that didn't come up at the last meeting, but I didn't come up at the last meeting hearing on this, but it came up in the last meeting. 
Uh, Maureen, has that been looked into to see if that's applicable for this site also? Uh, so to back up a little bit, so um, um, let's see here, any building or state building code requirement for this project or any project uh, the applicant would need to uh, comply with. Um, and there was a mention about making uh, residential dwellings uh, for multifamily homes EV ready. Uh, and um, that is part of the energy code. Um, and so when um, the applicant goes through his building permit application uh, process that will be uh, addressed. The, at the last meeting though, um, Craig, you had mentioned about a certain percentage of, of cars need to, uh, parking spaces need, if, if there's so many parking spaces, a percentage of them need to provide EV charging stations. That That is not applicable to any application before the ZBA. So uh, I did look into those regulations and it was uh, specific to um, like an airport or or some other development that the, the, the Commonwealth put um, regulations on. So I just wanted to clarify that. And Mr. Mora, the building commissioner is raising his hand. Mr. Mora. I just wanted to add to Maureen's comments that the requirements for EV ready are different for one and two family in our in our building and energy codes. Uh, unlike the commercial code where it does require a little bit more work to occur by bringing the uh, service point out to the parking area in the one and two family code it's more designed to be part of the building, you know, more like a receptacle in the garage or something like that so it's not it's not as extensive of a. Um, installation as it would be for a commercial building, which would be three units of residential dwellings or greater, anything bigger than that. Three, three units or greater? Three units or greater uh, transitions out of the one and two family residential code to a commercial code where that provision becomes applicable that we've seen in recent cases where we've brought conduit and uh, you know boxes out into the parking area to be truly ready mm -hmm. for the installation of an EV charging station out in the parking area. So this is more than three units, correct? This is a two unit building. Yeah, yeah but the current combination of the two buildings, is that not more than? No, the, the, the building code is applicable to, to the structure. So it, there could be multiple structures on the property that you know, you know, uh, amount to more than to three or more units, but it's building based, and this particular building is a two-unit building, so it follows the residential code, not the commercial codes. Great, that's good to know. Thank you. Great. Um, other questions or comments from board members? Great. Um, if there's no further comments, um, I think we should vote on the um, accepting the um, app the uh, submissions from the applicant on and uh, agree that they meet with conditions two, three, and four of ZBA uh, ZBA 20, 2022 dash fourteen, the earlier one and approve this ZBA 2022-18. Do I have a motion? A Mr. Maxfield, is there a second? Second. Motion is seconded. Is there further discussion on the motion? If there's no further discussion, the vote occurs on the motion. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. That's four votes. That's sufficient for passage of the uh, adoption of the special permit. Um, so moved and approved. Thank you very much. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next order of business is ZBA FY 2022-16 and ZBA FY 2022-15. Killerine Properties LLC, um, care of Valley Property Management. 
requesting a special permit to allow a non-owner occupied duplex and to request a special permit to extinguish the previously approved ZBA FY 1992-52 special permit under sections 3.321, 10.33, 10.38 of the zoning bylaw located at 80 Pine Street, map 5A, parcel 86, neighborhood residence district, RN, zoning district. Condition, this is continued from our June 23rd, 1920, uh, 2022 meeting. This is a proposal to have, to um, extinguish a previously existing special permit and to replace that with a new special permit. At the last meeting, there were several uh, requests from the board as well as from um, abutters and neighbors regarding this um, this project, this application. In pursuit of that, in, we have received numerous submissions from the applicant and from staff since that time. Let me go through briefly um, list those submissions. We have an updated sample lease with specifics to the property. We have a tenant building management summary. We have an updated, we have updated business plans showing the dining room door is to be eliminated, which was raised at the last meeting. An updated site plan showing a singular sign, which um, there was just debate about the board, um, from the board and the applicant about whether it would be a single sign or a sign for each parking space. There's a parking, parking management plan. There's a sample resident only parking sign uh, uh, submitted of a, a submission of a bicycle rack specification sheet for a seven bike bike rack, an email from Alan St. Hilaire regarding 80 Pine Street dated July 5th, an email from Alan St. Hilaire regarding 80 Pine Street dated January 28th, or June 28th, excuse me, an email from Alan St. Hilaire uh, regarding uh, 80 Pine Street uh, neighborhood outreach dated July 1st, and also an email from Alan St. Hilaire dated July 13th, 2022, which contains numerous, um, many of the uh, resubmission of many of the uh, items previously noted in the submission list. Staff submittals included an email from Mr. St. Hilaire from 80 Pine Street dated June 28th, an MA Corporation search entry, entity summary regarding Killerine Properties LLC, owner maps of owner occupied properties within a thousand feet of 80 Pine Street, non-owner occupied properties within 1,000 feet of 80 Pine Street, single family homes properties within 1,000 feet of Pine Street, two family home properties within 1,000 feet of Pine Street, eight units or larger properties within 1,000 feet of Pine Street, and a list of complaints filed on properties owned by Killer and Properties. That date of that uh, list is dated October 21st, 2022. I think that is all the submissions, uh, is it not? Maureen, I believe yep. so. that's that's it. Um, we conducted the site visit before, so that doesn't have to be reported on. I guess what I'd like to do is um, ask Mr. St. Hilaire for the applicant uh, to go over the changes that are submitted from our meeting uh, back in June, um, speak to those, and then we can open it up for questions from the the, the panel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will be happy to review our updated submissions and changes. Uh, I'll just go through them point by point and happy to answer any questions uh, at the end of the review. Uh, we have, uh, at the request of a couple of board members, uh, updated the parking plan uh, to define the edges a bit better and number the spaces to hopefully make them more identifiable. Uh, we've also submitted a, an additional parking management plan as to how resident parking will be managed with, you know, combination of collecting their vehicle information with their applications to issuing parking passes uh, and the signage that you mentioned earlier about resident parking only. Uh, we've also submitted a tenant management plan summary, which includes uh, some photos, uh, it outlines our philosophy of how we select tenants and how we set expectations right from the start uh, when potential tenants view these properties and kind of point out and explain the, 
the neighborhood and how it's uh, mixed use and there are several residential properties in the area and how they need to conduct themselves. And uh, beyond that, we did include some photos of the levels of finish that we're uh, implementing in these additions. We've had a couple of recent projects approved through the zoning board in town and those photos I've included to kind of show that we're, we're building high-end units here, granite countertops, hardwood floors, custom cabinetry uh, with, uh, you know, which further underscores our commitment to finding and placing good tenants. Uh, we certainly wouldn't want to have tenants that would not care for the property and not respect the neighbors uh, because we're making a significant financial investment in the property, which is an improvement not only to the property, but to the neighborhood. Um, we also resubmitted the additional information for apartments pages of the application, uh, pages 9 through 10 and 52 to 53 in the original packet, just to kind of clean up that language. There was some formatting errors and also to clarify uh, consistency between the lease language and the applicant package language. Uh, we also um, worked with uh, the, the neighbor to the east, uh, Mr. Alejandro, uh, his attorney, John McLaughlin, uh, we co-authored some uh, finer lease language and guest policy language, as well as a couple of uh, proposed conditions on the permit that would address the concerns of the neighbor so as to uh, any noise or disturbance or illegal activity complaints that may happen on the property and how they're to be addressed and what the, uh, the implications are for any kind of recurring issues with the tenants, which if, you know, if there's more than two, if, uh, more than two incidents that are documented, then they could face termination of lease and, and eviction under mass law. Uh, so according to that neighbor's attorney, Mr. McLaughlin, that assuages their concerns. They are happy with the proposal. Uh, I believe he's also going to comment when it comes time for the public comment to confirm that agreement. Uh, but my understanding is that we've reached a, a, a point of agreement as far as how any noise complaints will be handled and that we are going to have tenants that conduct themselves in a neighborly manner. Uh, the last thing that I'll mention is we did clear up a couple of points of confusion on the site plan, pointing out where the bike rack, trash storage, no parking sign, and also there was one light that was not clearly labeled, which is now labeled uh, building mounted light. I believe that summarizes all of the submitted changes. The, um, Mr. St. Hilaire, I did I also see in the, your email of July 13th, two additional conditions regarding um, leasing units on the subject premises. Um, it's, it's, the, it's entitled, the following conditions are also agreeable between the applicant and the abutter to the east of the subject property, 84 Pine Street. Mr. Alejandro, with assistance of attorney, Mr. J. McLaughlin. Those, is that an accurate representation of your position as well? That's condition 17 and 18? Yes, it is, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. So those should be added to the list of conditions. I mean, I'm proposing that those should be added to the list of conditions. We can vote on those later on. Um, and one other question I had is, I see on the site plan that there are the parking plan, uh, the demarcations of the parking spaces on the site plan have red lines along them. I don't know how, and could you describe how you, how you intend to demarcate those parking spaces a little closer it's or more or more visibly for the tenants on site our plan is to install uh, concrete curb stops at the head of each parking space uh, okay. that has worked very well for us in the past projects it, it gives them a place to line up to it outlines where each parking place is they're durable and lasting and aren't going to wear away with snow plowing and so forth all right great are there questions from members of the board? Okay. If not, um, in the hearing, we should have public, we should open it up to public comment. Uh, I see we have one, uh, Mr. McLaughlin, the attorney for the abutter, has raised his hand. Um, 
Mr. McLaughlin, could you please identify yourself and your address for the record? And yes. Then please, and then you have uh, three minutes approximately to state your case, your concerns. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Attorney McLaughlin, uh, Green Miles Lipton, 77 Pleasant Street. I'm here tonight on behalf of Carmen Roland and Roberto Alejandro, who live at 84 Pine Street. Uh, I want to thank the board for suggesting dialogue between the applicant and my clients. Uh, we had email communications, phone communications, multiple drafts, and we were able to uh, uh, reach a resolution of the matter, at least, and we hope that the board is can agree with what we've done. Uh, what was submitted that resolved my client's uh, issues was a new sample lease um, and a, also the uh, there's a, a group of agreeable conditions uh, that we uh, agreed to do. And one of the conditions itself harkens back to the Amherst uh, complaint response provisions. And those were submitted uh, also with the, the new sample lease and the new proposed conditions. Uh, in, in essence, one of the conditions says, uh, if there's you know breach of the lease provisions pertaining to noise, nuisance, alcohol sales, um, um, in the guest uh, tenant, the guest provisions, then it harkens back to the Amherst complaint response provision. So we'd like that to be, you know, noticed and, and included. Uh, but if the board accepts um, what I've worked out with the applicant, uh, my clients withdraw all objections and would speak in favor of this. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Is there any other comments from the public? Doesn't look like it. I don't think so. I just wanted to give people time to, because that went quickly. Uh, all right, nobody else. Um, Mr. Sandalaire, do you wish to respond to anything from Mr. to the public comment? Uh, no, we are in agreement. Okay. Attorney McLaughlin and I are in, in agreement. Great. Any further comments or questions from the board? If not, uh, let's move to the public meeting portion where we discuss the merits of this app of these two applications and um i guess i'd start out by saying that i think this is a, a case where um, it, we're it, it is a case where there's a it's a sensitive neighborhood in that it's about a two-thirds generally two-thirds owner occupied residential units one-third rental units so it's not a neighborhood with without uh, rental units and non-owner occupied, nor is it a neighborhood which is um, uh, predominantly non-owner occupied rental units. So it's important for us to be careful and to consider it, can be considered in our decisions and use the guidance of the zoning bylaw to, to decide how we uh, vote on this, um, this these matters and this matter in particular. I am also um, impressed with the um, response from the applicant to the concerns of the neighbors, and I'm impressed with the improvement in the uh, property uh, management and the, the reduction in complaints of killer and owned properties or O'Connell owned properties before and after management by Valley Management. It seems to be a, a case where there's better management currently than there had been in the past. So those are, I think, positive factors for me in considering this um, application. I also know that this project, this property has been rental property for a while. And so it is not a change in the rental property while it is a it increase in the potential number of renters and, and people that can live in the space um, compared to what there was before or there currently is. So for all those reasons, it seems to me that it is um, something that we should, it's, it, we have to do our due diligence, but this seems to me to be a reasonable uh, request from the property owner and the two motions one to extinguish the previous um, special permit and this one to um, at, create a new special permit with conditions um, seem to me to be a, a reasonable proposal and one that i would support but that being my summary i'd love to hear from any other board members who either agree or have other concerns or feel otherwise Mr. Maxfield. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to uh, agree with that sentiment there. I think um, as long as we can make our findings on this matter, if the, um, 
if the neighbors, uh, the abutters are okay with it, then I think we can move forward as again, as long as we can make the findings. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Maxfield. Any other comments? Mr. Meadows. But you're oh. muted, Craig. I'm very much in agreement with everything you said. I'm very impressed that the uh, that the homeowner and the management company have worked this out with uh, the neighbors' attorneys and and have come to a conclusion that is satisfying to both of them, apparently. And I I, I think this is a very uh, excellent indication of how the ZBA can help both sides on these these matters. I think that's a really good observation. And if I may, I, this seems to me to demonstrate that the use of the special permit process can improve the um, management of the proper, of rental properties and improve the conditions of the neighborhood um, if it's done correctly. And the conditionality of, of special permits, I think, is a key uh, factor in doing that. So I agree with you, what you said, Mr. Meadows, a lot. Thank you. All right. Are there any... Other comments? If not, we have a, an unusual, two motions, which is somewhat unusual. So the first motion is going to be to approve the new special permit. The second motion, yes, Maureen. Uh, first, you need to go through the findings. Well, yes, I will do that. But I'm just going <laughs> to explain what, how we're doing it. Yep, oh, okay, thank you. okay. Yep. And then the second, the second motion is to um, extingu extinguish the existing one. But to do that, we have to go through our findings under um, under 10.38 and I like to go through the conditions first because that's what allows us to make the findings so I want to review the conditions first and then we'll go into and because of those those conditions I think we can make I believe we can make the findings so the conditions are as follows uh, their standard uh, condition regarding projects shall be built maintained and managed according to the approved plans and I'm assuming that those will be updated with anything that that's been received Maureen after July 7th, mm -hmm. okay? Um, condition two re regards is the, the um, condition regarding logging and maintaining all complaints filed with the property owner. Condition three deals with the annual renewal of the residential registration and having Amherst and, and having the uh, complaint log submitted to the building commissioner, an up-to-date complaint log and violation log submitted to the building condition commissioner when the residential registration is applied for on an annual basis. Number four is to permit the expire upon uh, change of ownership unless, yes. Mr. Judd, um, I have a comment. I see that Alan might have a comment if you if you're, um, wanted to take his, uh, take his comment. But uh, I noticed a mistake on my part for condition three. I, I cite uh, condition 45 um oh, that yeah. should be condition two sorry okay condition two mr st Hilaire, is there uh normally we don't take comments in the middle of discussion but is there a, a urgent problem i, I apologize uh, the, the issue is that the two conditions about logging and reporting the complaints was something that was proposed to us but we 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 prefer to not have those two conditions on the permit um, and since they hadn't come up uh, since the initial project application report, we didn't realize that those were something that was going to be uh, imposed on this permit. Um, we, we feel that with the uh, reporting and uh, complaint tracking, both through the police department and rental registration program, that they, they're just not necessary or warranted on a project of this size. They were authored for a much, much larger project. Uh, and we feel that the, you know, the means in place, along with the complaint response plan, which is required uh, as, the, as part of the special permit, uh, are sufficient on this project. Well, Mr. Hilaire, I, I'm operating off the submission I received entitled Conditions for 80 Pine. The first line says the applicant agrees with conditions 1 through 16 proposed by staff board of the project application. We request the second paragraph of Condition 2, which I was going to get to. And the expiry of the change of ownership was proposed in the project application report include the following language which deals with foreclosure so you um, which we have done in the past um, these conditions one and two or conditions three and four which conditions two and three excuse me are um, i think 
reasonable reasonable um, requirements regarding um, non-owner occupied two, two bedroom or two unit and or larger um, properties in town on something that I think we'd be looking at using more commonly going forward. I don't think they're, I don't read this as being tremendously burdensome. Um, keeping a log, you'll have to do some of this anyway, pursuant to the lease that uh, the modifications of the lease that you've agreed with with the, uh, the, the neighbors. Um, and upon the annual submission is, it, it seems to me that, that all of this is some is, is information that you would norm under normal course of business have in your in your possession at the current time. And it's just merely recording those and submitting them as on an annual basis to the town. Um, it doesn't, it also reinforces the, um, I think reinforces the way in which we can make judgments about, we as a board and the town itself can make judgments regarding the um, problems, if there are any, or the, the, either the good or the bad management of rental housing as it goes into residential districts. And so I'm, these are important to me, um, but I'd like to, I'd like to continue to have those in the, in the conditions. So that's where I'm coming from. The other board members may disagree, but it seems to me that these are reasonable things. And I'm sorry that you're only the second one out of the shoot on this, but I think this will be something that won't put you at a disadvantage compared to other um, management companies. Cause I, I think this is a model of something similar to this will be considered by the board at, at future applications. Understood. I was just caught off guard a bit here because the, the project act application report I'm looking at from June 23rd had those the conditions that we did not have an objection to. I, I did not receive any update to that. Uh, and I'm not seeing those conditions in that project application report. Oh, I'm looking at uh, application report related, dated July 7th. Got it. Okay. Well, this is something that's yep. going to be uh, stand, the standard expectation. Then I suppose well, I, we can I, live with it. I guess I can't promise that, but it would be my intent to put it before the board or a version close to this before the board. Um, with other applications that come before us. Thank you for taking my comment. Yep, thank you. It's good to clarify that. Sorry for any confusion. Um, other conditions include, um, this is added, the standard condition on expiry of change of ownership, unless the prior change of ownership perspective, this permission shall expire upon the change of ownership, unless, Prior to the exchange of ownership, the prospective property owner shall appear before the ZBA at a public hearing for review and approval of the management plan, parking plan, uh, parking management plan, and lease agreement, and to determine whether additional conditions are needed to meet section 10.38 findings under the zoning bylaw. And the butter notices shall be made in accordance with general law, Massachusetts general laws 40A and 11, section 11 of the ZBA rules and regulations. This is a similar. Um, condition that we placed on other um, properties in the last couple of in the last year, as well as the modification requested by the um, Maureen, we have a modification requested by the applicant that deals with um, uh, foreclosures, if the mortgage is foreclosed, and that was included in the package. And I agree that should also be in there as has been in other previous, um, previous special permits. Uh, standard condition that all rooms shall be used and labeled as the following. Any dwelling unit on the property shall be rented and registered with the residential rental bylaw. The approved management plan shall be followed and the owner may change to this plan, including change of property management shall return to the Zoning Board of Appeals at a public meeting. No more than four unrelated individuals shall occupy each dwelling unit. All exterior lighting shall be designed and downcast, um, dark sky compliant. Street numbers shall be clearly marked and reflective. Parking shall occur on improved spaces only. The parking is maintained. Um, I don't know that we need to reference the new parking but because it's already gonna be referenced in the new sheets. Uh, the parking and drive shall be constructed in accordance with article seven. Parking should be clearly delineated. I think we've had an explanation of what that means in this case. And I think that's fine under this case. Um, individual parking, again, they should be, Maureen, do we need both of these? I don't think we need 12 and 13. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, 12. You, you it is re sort of all kind of restating. Shall be clear, and, and individual parking places shall be marked. 
I think we just need one of those. Sure, we could combine them. Yep. Yep. Under no circumstances shall the basement of the dwelling be used for sleeping or living spaces. All conditions imposed under the order shall be followed at all times. The order that is the um, order of the concom, if I'm not incorrect. Right? Correct. Um, total number of persons is limited to ten or fewer people at any time. This limit is a, is in total and shall include lessees and residents. Um, so it's a limit of a large number of people in the gallery, and that references back to the the new lease policy of the amended lease that um, he has submitted. Overnight stays for one, for one guest are limited to four days in any consecutive 30 day period or 14 days during the lease term. Again, that re references the lease, uh, revised lease and the maximum number of overnight visitors shall be four people at any one time. Again, representing the lease policy. Are there any other conditions, any questions about these conditions or any other additional con conditions that the board wishes to impose or discuss? Okay. Oh, so, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, yep. Attorney McLaughlin has, and, McLaughlin. and and Rob Mora has, have, they have both each have raised their hands. All right, Mr. Mora first. I think I'm going to say exactly what Attorney McLaughlin was going to say is that there were three conditions I think that were uh, suggested to be proposed that I, I think you would be um, adding to this list that were part oh. of. Uh, understanding between the owner and their oh, yep. and attorney. Yep. Let me find those. So with, uh, when leasing the units on the subject premises, the applicant agent shall utilize leases consistent yeah. with the sample lease. That's right. That I'm one. To, and then, uh, I read that, but I can't find it. Oh, yeah, okay. read them all through. Would, would you oh, mind? Okay, the, the, they're funny. lengthy. Okay, hold on. Okay, when leasing the units on the subject premises, the applicant slash agent shall utilize leases consistent with the sample lease oh. dated July 12, 2022, submitted to the board with said leases containing provisions barring noise, disturbance, or nuisance as set forth in sample lease 5L, barring alcohol sales at has set forth in sample lease 5N uh, and mandating compliance with the guest policy set forth in lease sample lease 5M uh, and in addendum to sample lease and provisions in the lease, which provides that should, should the applicant or management observe or become aware of a violation of these provisions or receive a valid complaint regarding same that shall constitute sufficient grounds for termination of the lease pursuant with the compli complaint response plan, plan in Mass Journal Law, Chapter 186. If the lease provisions referenced in the condition listed above are violated, property leaser management shall follow steps outlined in the complaint response plan dated mm -hmm. July 12, 2022. And then the next, one, next condition is the applicant shall keep the contact information for leaser or their agent listed in the complaint response plan updated at all times with rental permitting inspection services, including after our contacts. Additionally, the applicant will provide in writing this contact information and any updates thereof to the direct abutters on Pine Street to the subject property. Email shall be considered sufficient written communication. Correct. Thank you for the recitation of those conditions. All right, now, Mr. McLaughlin, are you fine with this? Oh, he, he's blinking yep. in and out. Uh, he yes. Be, yeah, he yes, must be Mr. yes. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, yep. th those were the conditions that we worked on and thank you for yep. considering them. Thank you. Nope, and I, I see them here. I just had failed to identify them. All right, good enough. Um, if there's no discussion on those conditions, um, we include these, unless there's any objection, um, these conditions shall be included in the motion to approve the special permit. Uh, Maureen has graciously, and because she's worried that I might goof this up, has graciously put sample motions for us uh, in this case. So the sample motion before the, I'm gonna read this and, um, and then I'll ask for a second. The sample motion is that um, we close the public for ZBA FY 2022-16. That we make a motion, I make a motion to close the public hearing and to approve the special permit to allow a non-owner occupied duplex under section 3.3211 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw 
located at 80 Pine Street, Map 5A, Parcel 86, Neighborhood Residence RN Zoning District with said conditions that we've just been through, and I would reference those 1 through 18, I think. Um, and ZBA, and that's the motion. Do I have a second? Uh, Mr. Chair, would you like to go through the 10.38 findings? Yes, I would, Maureen. <laughs> yes, I would. And then any other so, findings so that anxious, are applicable? I was so anxious that we were, and happy that we'd resolve this quickly that I, I skipped an important step. And I thank you for helping us on that. Um, first of all, we have to find under section 3.3211, the uh, non own Owner pie, non owner occupied duplex. Uh, for non owner occupied duplexes, one or both dwelling units are rented and neither unit serves as a principal residence of one or more owners. 80 Pine Street is in the neighborhood residence district. In that zoning district, the proposed use, uh, non owner occupied duplex, is a use permitted by special permit by the Zoning Board of Appeals pursuant to section 3.211 and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw. Um, they have met the other requirements with the uh, property management They met the requirements regarding um, responsible rental property entity and, and with valley management and the applicant has provided contact inf um, the, well the applicant hasn't provided contact information for one residence we do have uh, i think you're going to be doing that or um, you do have a either you will do that or you have a 24-hour uh, um, number for the management company to be reached by uh, for complaints. And the applicant has provided a, to the board a copy of the management plan and the complaint response plan. We also find that they have complied with parking and access regulation under Article 7. We also find that the uh, they are within the dimensional requirements of um, Table 3. And we move on to Section 10.38 specific findings. For 10.380 and 381, this is, deals with uh, the proposal being suitably no, located in the community and it's compatible with existing units and is on, on, uh, on existing uses and other units uses permitted by right in the same district. The staff uh, reviewed this and, and um, I believe we proposed that they proposed a non owner occupied duplex, which is allowed in the district and allowed by special permit if review and approval. The property is located along a highly traveled road, Pine Street, comprised of a broad range of architectural styles, including single family and two family homes. There are also municipal, educational, retail, dining, and commercial businesses in close proximity. 10.382, 10.383, 385, and 387. The proposal would not constitute, we have to find that the proposal will not constitute a nuisance due to air, water pollution, flood, noise, etc. The proposal would not substantially inconvenient or be a hazard to abutters. The proposal provides a, a convenient and vehicular pedestrian movement within the site. We find that the proposal maintains the existing plannings to visually shield the proposed parking and trash and recycling containers from the adjacent properties to the east, west, and south. And the proposal provides dark sky compliant lighting and provides safe and, vehic and safe vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site and in relation to other properties. 10.384, adequate or appropriate facilities would be provided for the proper operation of the proposed use. Utilities, utilities are found on to be adequate. Proposal ensures that it is in performance with the parking and sign regulations. It is, there's four parking spaces for each dwelling and conditions set forth um, and in the parking plan submitted, we find that they comply with the parking and sign reg regulations. Proposal provides convenient, safe vehicular and pedestrian movement um, we find that that's the case. The proposal ensures adequate space for off-street loading. That's not app applicable to this project. The proposal uh, provides adequate methods of disposal and or storage for sewage, refuge, and recyclables. The trash and recycling bins will be stored and serviced via four 96-gallon rolling poly carts servicing both trash and recycling. Containers shall be located on the north side of the building between entrances to units A and B and will be screened from the public right away by the house to the west and south and by the existing vegetation to the east. Weekly pickup for both residential units will be provided by USA Handling and Recycling. The subject of property is connected to the town's water and sewer. 10.390, the proposed proposal ensures protections from flood hazards as stated in section 3.228. Um, 
The property is not found within the desert flood zone. The board has, however, uh, conditioned this proposal on the on compliance with the order of conditions DEP number 0889-0697 from the, uh, the uh, Conservation Commission. 10.391 is not applicable. It deals with unique or historic features. 10.392 provides adequate, the proposal provides adequate landscaping, screening of adjacent residential uses and provision of street to streets, landscape islands and parking and landscape buffer along street frontage. Um, the proposal maintains existing landscaping screen from adjacent residential uses. The proposal includes an 860 square foot vegetative res restoration area at the location where the detached barn will be demolished and said restoration area will receive six inch top of topsoil with plantings of 10, 24 to 36 inch high, inch high, high bush blueberry shrubs and conservation wildlife seed mix. 10.393 proposal provides protections of adjacent properties by minute, minimizing ex, the intrusion of lighting, including parking lot and exterior lighting. Um, we've dealt, that's referenced in the lighting plan and the, the lighting plan is dark sky compliant exterior lightings and fixtures to eliminate the parking areas and the walkways. Um, 10.394 deals with impact on steep slopes is not applicable. 10.395, the proposal does not create disharmony with respect to the terrain, use scale, and uh, architecture of existing buildings. Um, the staff reviewed this. Uh, the Pine Street location neighborhood is located along a highly traveled main artery. Business between North Amherst and Pelham, as well as uh, Cushman and Leverett and Shutesbury. Business and commercial large and large family, multifamily uses are located in North Amherst to the west and immediately to the north of the subject property. There are several existing multifamily dwellings and single family dwellings along the section of Pine Street. Um, as we go through this, we find that there are a total of 48 properties are owner occupied, 25 are non owner occupied, 43 are identified as having single families, a single family home. 11 properties are identified as having two family homes and a total of two properties are identified as are large um, uh, rental units having eight units or more. The neighborhood is comprised of a broad range of architectural styles. And the uh, style of the home, the architectural style of, in the immediate vicinity of this home is, is varies and this is, comports with that varied style. In proportion, scale, shape, landscape, and uh, 10.396 deals with proposal to provide a screening for storage areas. Uh, uses the screens to, to, to screen the strat, trash and recycling bins, either from the, by placement of the house or by vegetation. 10.397 deals with recreational facilities. We find there's sufficient open space. 398 deals with harmony, the general purpose and the intent of the bylaw. Section four of demographics and housing of the Amherst master plan states that a mix of housing be provided to meet the needs of and is affordable to the broadest spectrum of the community. With the applicant providing the supplementary dwellings as redevelopment on existing properties, the proposal has met the intent of the master plan by providing a mix of housing within the neighborhood. The board needs to find whether the proposal meets the applicable zoning bylaws, including section 3.211, 10.33, and 10.38. Um, th those are the findings. Are there any objections, concerns, questions about the findings? If not, I think the motion before us as stated is to approve ZBA 2022-16 with the conditions and based on the findings we have made. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? If there's no further discussion, we move to a vote on this motion. This will be a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. That's four votes, the amount required for approval of a special permit. The motion is passed. The second motion is to extinguish the currently existing um, special permit. So that's F ZBA motion um, 
ZBA application FY 2022-15. I make a motion to close the public hearing and to approve the special permit to extinguish the previously approved ZBA FY 1992-52 special permit under section 10.33 and 10.20 bylaw. I would also note that I think the same 10.38 um, conditions are met for this motion as were previously stated, and I don't feel we have to go through all the 10.38 one more um, time if we reference that if, if we reference uh, it in this so, case am i wrong so uh the second motion for the application for um 2022-15 is actually to extinguish the previous right. approved so uh there doesn't need to be any conditions that are part of this this is to terminate that special permit and that and therefore the other Special permit that you just approved uh, is the one that will be valid. Have the conditions, yeah. Yeah. We don't need to do any conditions for this. Correct. Do I have a second? Second, Ms. Parks. <laughs> you you had your hand up first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there any discussion? If there's no discussion, the motion the vote occurs on the motion. Um, Chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. That's four votes. Four votes are sufficient to pass a special permit. Um, the motion passes. Congratulations. Yeah. Your two special permits. Uh, good luck and thank you for working with the neighbors and bringing this to us um, in this in this manner. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, um, Ms. Pollock, uh, and Attorney McLaughlin, and Mr. Mora. We appreciate all your help on this. The next order of business is ZBA 2022-17, CNS Home Solutions LLC requests a special permit to allow an increase in the number of residential units converted dwelling from one to two under sections 3.3241, 7.9, 9.22, and 10.38 of the zoning bylaw, located at 485 Pine Street, map 6A, parcel 38, neighborhood residence, RN zoning district. I'm just going to grab my the submissions that we have. But first I will talk about the site visit. We had a site visit I, this week, I think it was Tuesday, we had a site visit. Um, we walked the property. Um, of, we met with the, the current owner, walked the property line to the back of the the property, observed the fencing, observed the um, shed, and we walked around the house, and then we entered the house. Um, it is clear that the house is in um, disrepair and needs significant work. Uh, but we walked through the house, we walked upstairs, and we also went to the basement. The house has been cleaned out. Um, or the, much has been removed from the house in terms of what was uh, material that was in the house, but there still um, needs significant work on the premises. There is, um, we observed the property around the house, um, asked about the there's a doorway that opens up to about a five or six foot drop, the second egress of the first floor. Um, there are numerous um, doors in the house that have um, that enter into rooms that would otherwise be, I think, a bedroom or a, could be used as a bedroom, but it's probably labeled as a, as a dining room. I think there's significant work that has to be done on the property and, uh, in the, uh, uh, the, uh, the current as it currently stands. Um, but the property needs a lot of work. And other than that, we uh, understand that the current owner is intends to sell. We talked to the current owner. He told us that he, he intends to sell the property uh, and, and has a purchase agreement contingent upon um, various factors, and one of which may be the um, approval of a special permit. Um, Maureen and Mr. Maxfeld, you were both there. Um, is there anything else you wish to add to the description of the site visit? Okay. All right. Um, materials that we've received on this 
from this property include a um, pro zoning board of appeals special permit application. We have received included in that is a complaint response form, a additional information required for any residential rental unit dealing with signage, landscaping, snow removal, um, trash and recycling and parking. We have received a memorandum in support of the application, which is a, uh, a narrative talking about the, the, the uh, desire of the applicant, uh, what he wants to do with the property and uh, suggesting uh, findings under 10.38, 9.22 and 3.3241. We also have a, um, so that was submitted by attorney Robert Pellegrini. We have the Commonwealth of Mass, a deed from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts showing the property from 1926, um, which outlines the property. I mean, we outlines the property and it has a, um, a map, a site plan attached to it. We've also received a site plan from, um, CNS Home Solutions. I don't know. Daniel. Sauls is the land surveyor in this case. That's dated 4-14-2022. There also is, has been communication between the staff, Ms. Pollock and attorney Pellegrini uh, and others in his law firm, I think. Um, those are dated July 1st, July 5th, July 6th. Those include um, response to the public comments, as well as some tenants leaks notification questions and uh, dealing with the site visit. I think that's it for the submissions on this pro on this property. Is there anything else, Maureen? Uh, yep. If you didn't say it already, uh, the management plan and the complaint response plan, and then there was a public yep. comment submitted by Daniel Wraith, oh, maybe? I, I didn't, it, that I did not mention, yep. Yep. Please. And who resides at 11 Hitching Post Road and the email was sent on July 1st. Great. Okay. Um, who's here representing the applicant? Hi, this is uh, Rob Pellegrini um, representing okay. the applicant. <clears throat> the applicant. And, and Mr. Pellegrini, can you just uh, for the record, give us your address? Sure. Um, 63 Main Street in Bridgewater, 02324. Thank you. And I, uh, my clients here as well, CNS Home Solutions, it's actually, uh, he isn't, hasn't raised his hand, but he's- Oh, it, what is here. his name? Is it Kyle? Yes, it is, yeah. Oh, okay, I'll make him a panelist. All right, great, thanks. And, and what is, uh, who is he, sorry? He's the owner of CNS, the the applicant and, and the owner. So um, I think this one, uh, we have a recent development. Um, the, the buyer actually walked on him today. So um, what I wanted to ask sort of, publicly is this really came up because CNS um, originally purchased it to renovate it. They believed it to be a legal two family at the time uh, for a variety of reasons and uh, marketed, marketed it that way as well. And then when the actual buyers came in, obviously as part of their process, they went in to see uh, Mr. Mora, um, at which time they realized um, there might be some questions on the use, um, which is practical to me. Um, you know, you can see from what's available in the, um, the town um, documents that it's been used that way for quite some time, um, as I had indicated. And, um, but there wasn't ever a formal 
permit approved. So what I'm concerned with is that CNS is going to kind of be in this holding pattern when I'm sure everybody can agree that it would be great if this property could be cleaned up. Um, so what I wanted to sort of ask is if there's any way that CNS could at least be given the a level of comfort that they could just market and try to find a new buyer as a two family. They definitely don't want to even pull a permit, you know, let alone have it occupied. So I'm wondering if there's some way that the ZBA can sort of acknowledge it. And, you know, even if there was a con uh, a recorded condition on there that not even a permit could be applied for until they return to the ZBA for the proper permitting. But to me right now, it seems very premature to be proposing a lease, for example, when there's not even an end user. So I certainly don't wanna waste your time, but I do recognize that there's a need for my client to move on, so. That's my request, I guess, at this time, which isn't what I was in really anticipating asking for tonight, but it is what it is. Um, I'm gonna ask Rob and the staff to respond directly to the possibility of some sort of interim step and perhaps can walk with you, walk you through the steps that we use in town to um, deal with, proper, deal with um, properties like this. But I do want to just be um, straightforward with my fellow board members who cannot attend the um, the site visit. The, the, this is a property that needs a lot of work. It is it is um, from the outside the landscape. Everything is a, is a mess. It's overgrown. The the uh, the house has, doesn't have, you know like I said has a door that drops six five feet onto the ground. Um, the, it's overgrown. The um, the barn in the back is full of, of junk, and it's I'm not sure that it's will stand up much longer. Um, the house is inside. The house is in very very bad shape. It took all we could handle just to walk through it, um, and it needs significant amount of work. Um, and I think this. All that being said. It's a long ways from being ready to receive a, I believe, a long ways from being ready to receive a special permit. It's nowhere close to receiving an occupancy of residency. It's, it's, a, it's a mess, to say the least. Um, all that being said, it's not a, um, it is a place where I think a two, a, a um, duplex, either owner occupied or non owner occupied, is probably appropriate. It's close to, it's next door to Cushman Market. There are other owner, there are other duplexes and rental non-owner occupied rental properties in the near area, and I don't think it'd be disruptive to the neighborhood. In fact, it'll be an improvement to the neighborhood if this place would be uh, fixed up and um, and you know meet basic building codes and safety features, which this doesn't at the present time. So I'm not. I want to assure you or the, or the applicant that I don't think this is. That the board, I'm not, and I don't think any of the board members are opposed to uh, trying to facilitate uh, rental pro actual rental property on that space. We need the rental property, and this is a good place for it. It's just got a long ways to go, and everything, in, and there's a lot more that we typically require from um, these rental permits than we've gotten so far on this property. I mean, for example, right now there's only one, there's 100 volt. Uh, 100 amp service for a duplex that isn't going to work you got to have more than that number one number two there's never been any kind of residential rental permit pulled on this there's never been applied for is it, so it's been operating outside of, of the of the um town requirements now that's not this current owner's fault i admit that it was the prior owner because this current owner just bought this recently but he inherited this mess um there's not there's the there's not a real lighting, we need more of a lighting plan. The parking plan doesn't really fit the property. There's, there's a right of way that's along the property line that extends five feet on each side of the property line. But that right of way is for um, passage, it's not for parking. 
there is place on there is sufficient room on the property for parking but we we don't have a we need to have a parking plan we also need more specific plans in terms of the landscape right now it's just it's overgrown with weedy trees and and i think you want to remove i think at some point you're going to for just for safety reasons you're going to want to remove the the um the shed in the back um because i don't think that's to my eye i don't think that's a, uh it's, it's a safe or a stable dwelling or safe stable building so i think you're going to need need a whole lot of things and I, what i would encourage you and i would leave also leave this open to other members of the board i would encourage you to perhaps think about withdrawing the withdrawing the application at this point working with the staff to try to come up with a way to um uh, come come up with some designs or come up with some kind of at least a, at least a management plan and other things that we could then look at when there is a potential for a buyer um we are not I think you can say that I can't believe there's anybody in the on the board who would oppose a reasonable proposal for rental housing in that area, either owner occupied or non owner occupied. But we just need a whole lot more information than we have currently to be able to approve that, even the first step, Mr. Pellegrino. So that's my that's my feeling. I'm happy to open it up to comments from the board, but I don't. I want to say it's a real problem, but I don't think it is. But I don't think it's a problem that can't be fixed. So that's two negatives. I think it's a problem that can be fixed. I'll put it that way. Yeah. And so, um, Mr. Maxfield, you were there at the, at the site visit. Is there anything that I said that you would disagree with, or do you think this that represents your feeling as well? You no, know, I absolutely agree with that. Um, yeah, I mean, to continue, the uh, theme of the night here, just echoing what you said on this one. I um, Going in there, it's yeah, that that house is is so so far for being anything that something can lit uh, can be lived in, but yeah, I think I'd love to see that turned into something that that could be um, livable. I think it's a great location, and I think if the applicant does want it to be a um, two family home, a duplex in there, I think that is a good location for it. But yeah, I agree right now with what what's been given to us uh it's 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 nothing close to what we would need and just looking at that property it i i yeah it would it really would take a a, a total overhaul so i think your suggestion of withdrawing and and working with town staff to get get it to a point that it can be something that come before us that we would be able to approve i think is uh is probably the best way forward on this and mr pellegrino i would also say that I, you know, I'm, I'm up, I would not be, I would not be in favor of some kind of official action at this point, taking some official action on the ZBA to give a prospective buyer, a, you know, a certainty. But I, this is a public meeting. This is recorded. Uh, the perspective, you could certainly point, you or your client could certainly point this prospective buyer to the, um, the um, intention of the board through this meeting, what we'd like to see. And I think that would give them some comfort, but I'm not prepared at this point to provide anything more formal than that or more or more uh, concrete. Okay. That's so but I, I want to just in case I've missed something, Mr. Mora or Maureen, is there anything else that you wish to add that we should know about? You can work with these. You can certainly work with the uh, the applicant to find something if they withdraw it, come back with other other options. Could you not? Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I, I personally wasn't at the site visit, but I did hear a little bit about it, but as a vacant property, uh, not registered in the, in the rental permanent program, uh, I would expect that the building inspector that conducted the site visit probably would put some sort of notice out to the owner anyway, just to, um, you know, establish for the record that the, the building sounds like it's unsafe, you know, just by what I've heard here tonight. So I think that would probably be um, our next step. And then, uh, you know, absolutely, we would be, you know, available to work with the property owner or the next property owner, if that's the case to, uh, you know, bring the property back to a condition that uh, could be presented to the board. But I totally agree with the comments made so far there. It doesn't sound like there's an action for the board to make or take at this point. It's, you know, it's approval denial on the request. And I don't think there's really any other option. Yeah. Okay. So any other comments from board members? I don't want to shut this off before we proceed any further. You know, I think your options are to, 
to ask that it be withdrawn and withdrawn without press without prejudice and since we've gotten to a meeting does that require a vote on our part or can uh, the first, applicant do it go ahead morning oh, uh i guess because this is a public hearing um you should open it up to the for public comment yep we will but i just want to I, I, that's a good reminder maureen i just want to understand what the possibility is so the public can respond to this as well but the possibility is for the applicant to withdraw it if he wishes and does it does that need a vote on our part if they withdraw yes yep prejudice? yep so you would so. um similar to the other uh the last special yep. permit application you would make a motion to close the public hearing and to if it's well actually so is it the applicant the applicant would make the request to withdraw without prejudice and we would need to vote and then to accept you that would, request you would vote you would vote on that so if right. they're agreeable to that okay all right so, let's see if there's any public yep we'll get to that in a second but i just want to make sure the public knew what we were doing before we get public comment so um is there any public comment i no, this is kyle the actual applicant yes mr cabral please identify yourself it's Kyle Cabral. I'm one, I'm one of the owners of CNS Home Solutions. Yes. Yeah, so I just want to make some, I understood what everyone said. I just want to make some additional context. I know some of the submissions earlier in terms of the documentation that was provided. Um, this started, again, just context for the future, um, for potentially a future buyer to uh, deal with this. So, and, and I'll let you label my intent uh, right now. Um, I had a sense that this session was gonna go this way, which is fine. Um, this morning I got word of the new buyer it was essentially withdrawing uh, because of her non-confidence of being able to do what she wants and, and getting this a two family, it's been a long process. Um, but the initial discussions with uh, Rob we had and we found information, I, I don't know, it was in the late 70s or early 80s, where there was clearly a, a, a switch from a single family to a two family. And there was a, even a two family alteration that was written down. And at that point is when the town ex assumingly accepted it as a two family, which is why under the assessor's database, it's listed as a two family. My only ask is um, to probably revert that language in the assessor's database back to a single, if, if that to be the case. The only thing I, I wanna say, and I will, pass this on to the who the prospective buyer was going to be um that there there may you guys would be willing to work with her but my intent is to 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 close this um and the only the only thing that um not unhappy about but it's 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 too bad i just don't have the time to continue this myself in terms of this is an investment decision for me um so my plan is to essentially sell it as a single family and I'm not sure who the next buyer is going to be, but I do know who this prospective buyer would be in terms of a two family. It's a, it's a essentially a high net worth person, a very high quality person. And she essentially outlined her plan. She was going to probably spend over $200,000 on the property and make it a beautiful property. And I have full faith that she was going to do that. But now that opportunity is going away. Um, so I definitely intend to, to put it back in the market because I just can't deal from this deal with it from a holding perspective in terms of the costs associated to it. Um, so that is gonna be my intent. And I will let the, whoever the new buyer is, let them know that the town's willing to work and, and that's fine. Um, but I just wanna just let the board know on how we're, we're approaching this, so. Thank you. All right, other comments from the public? If not, um, any response from board members to the public comment? Ms. Parks. So I'm just wondering how this house is, um, how the um, uh, Robert Maureen maybe, um, how this house is going to be listed going forward. Right now it's listed as a two family house. I, I looked at the property card. Um, do you have a feeling about um, what Kyle said about turning it back into a, a one family home? Yeah, I, you know, I think now that we're aware of it uh, and we haven't been able to ourselves find any uh, documentation to support it being a two family 
um, and, and this current owner has isn't able to provide anything, I think what we would do now typically is notify the assessor's office formally that uh, we think that uh, that was an error at some point and it needs to be corrected and, and listed as a single family. It doesn't change any of the prior property cards. So as you go back in history, you'll see what happened. It'll show up as a two family for a certain period of time. Uh, the notes that Kyle spoke about will still remain there. It's just that the most current record would, um, would probably stay vacant single family as its last known use. All right, thank you, Mr. Mora. Any other questions, comments from the board? I think I sense that the applicant would like to withdraw this without prejudice. And if I am correct, um, and I see you, um, Mr. Pellegrino nodding, and that's what I heard Mr. Cabral uh, say as well. I would move, I would acknowledge your, the applicant's request and move that the application pursuant to the request of the applicant be withdrawn without prejudice. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Meadows seconds. Um, is there any discussion? And without prejudice for the benefit of you, Mr. Uh, for, of everybody means it can be brought back again within a two year period. And so it's this, we can see this property can be um, before the board again. All right, um, any Mr. further Judge, questions? Uh, yeah. Mr. Mora has raised his hand. Mr. Mora, yep. Yeah, uh, very minor thing, but important, uh, Mr. Judge, if we could ask Mr. Pellegrini to state that, you know, or at least, you know, say okay um or we okay. saw his head nodding and you know <laughs> kyle's screen is turned off i just you know i want to be clear that that is their request and they understand that and are making that request to the board uh, a little bit All more right. than that. okay that's exactly what i was going to ask for great all right if there's no discussion the vote occurs on the motion it's a roll call vote and requires four votes. Chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. That's four votes. That's sufficient to pass the motion to withdraw the application without prejudice. Um, I would, my comment would just be, I hope that you'll look to work with uh, staff. Uh, we do, we have a desire in this town to have more housing and more rental affordable rental housing especially is incredibly important it seems like a great place to do that and we know that you have a town that's that wants to work with you to accomplish that in a, in a way consistent with uh, the zoning bylaws and the requirements of the town so thank you for your interest and um, thank you for your effort thank you very much have a nice evening you thanks bet. everyone good luck to, good luck to you thanks. Bye bye there being no other items on the agenda, the next order of business is public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. So if anyone from the public wishes to speak, yeah. uh, uh, press the raise your hand feature tool. All right, no hands raised. Next order of business is any old, any new business not anticipated in the last 48 hours. This is a place where we can talk about what our next meet, when our next meeting is, Maureen, and what's on the schedule for that. Yeah, uh, I guess firstly, uh, the the remote meeting, um, uh, the um, the I guess the state regulations on uh, remote meeting is expiring at midnight today. Um, and that was a, a pandemic related open meeting law relief. Um, although it it is anticipated that the um, the state legislative body will uh, perhaps extend the remote participation, um, they haven't done so as of yet. I guess the bill, the House passed a certain <laughs> bill, and then the Senate passed a different version, so they are are not in sync. So 
both bodies need to come together and, and pass the same bill before Governor Baker signs off on it. Needless to say, so uh, our next meeting or all meetings moving forward and, until the uh, a, a new uh, bill is enacted by the state, uh, I, get, I guess we're going to start meeting in person. Um, so that includes uh, the next meeting, which is uh, scheduled for July 28th. Um, I am, I believe I'm going to be um, list, um, stating on the agenda and uh, in the legal ad that the meeting will be held in person in the town room located on the second floor of, of the town hall. And it will also list the Zoom login information. So perhaps if the legislative body does pass something um, to allow to allow the uh, the continuance of using uh, doing remote con uh, participation perhaps we can say oh forget about meeting in person we can just meet in zoom but we won't know until um, July 28th or, or um, between now and July 28th and so with that uh, if it is meeting in person, I believe we need to have uh, we need to have quorum for uh, in person participation. So with this board, we would need at least three ZBA members present in the town room, um, and any other ZBA members uh, could uh, meet remotely. So if perhaps just throwing it out there, if someone's in Wellfleet or Columbia or who who knows where. Um, perhaps they could continue um, participating remotely. And um, what we have scheduled for that meeting so far is a public hearing to review the rules and regs, the ZBA rules and regs, um, particularly the legal ad advertisement fee. Um, and I suggest that everyone review the rules and regs uh, to see if you have any other suggestions uh, for editing um, or amending. And then there's two public meetings scheduled. One would be for you drive south. That's the, uh, you, this board previously approved the special permit for a mixed use building. It's currently being constructed and they uh, need to come back at a public meeting for the review and approval of their permanent signage. And then the, so, the, the board previously approved a solar project at the Hickory Ridge Golf Course located on West Pomeroy Lane. Um, and they um, need to ask for an extension of their permit. Their special permit is gonna expire in September. Um, they've been having issues with, um, um, with uh, shortages of uh, solar pa panels, um, which I, I believe is you know a result of the pandemic. Um, and so they're trying to um, um, get panels and it's taking much longer than needed. And then they need to amend a condition. Uh, a condition. So uh, we'll be taking up, the, up those three items at the July 28th meeting. So if anyone cannot attend, I believe Tammy can't attend and Dylan can't attend. Yep. Oh, and Craig, uh-oh, can't attend. Oh boy. In person or, or at all? For me, it's in person. Uh, okay. I but you could in New York City that day. So. Well, so I and then I guess um, another announcement, which will be related to this discussion, is that the town council appointed um, Sarah Marshall to the ZBA, and she was she just uh, was sworn in by the town clerk, I believe, today, um, and she has um, already. Um, uh, confirmed that she's available for the July 28th meeting. Um, I I actually forgot to ask if she could attend in person. Assuming that she can, then we would have Steve. Oh boy. St right Steve, now, I don't know, Sarah. Perhaps, oh, we would need a third person to attend. Um, well, we and to I to believe that the town council is going to re reconsider the appointmentship of John. I forget his last name already. Varner. Varner, and that will take place on July 18th. Oof. We also have John Gilbert. Oh, and John Gilbert. Okay, so, so Steve, So, so right Sarah. now we have Steve. I don't know if Sarah can appear in person, but we have three people that possibly can. Myself, Sarah, and, and John. John Gilbert. And he has confirmed Those that three. he can attend. And then okay. Craig can attend uh, remotely. That's four people. And then if John is appointed, uh, uh, with, by the town council, that would be five members. Five. But we have, but we have 
it sounds like we have three for for a quorum in person because that's what we need to run the meeting and four to vote on any special permit so that yeah if that's the case we have sufficient members yeah and but I believe question, Sarah is in attendance right now. I'll send you an email. But if uh, Sarah, if, if you he are hearing me, you can just send me a quick email saying if you can attend in person or not. That that would be helpful. So that, that does mean that for Tammy, Dylan, and Craig, uh, if you have questions about the rules, the regulations, if you have, um, if you have a suggestion or you want to talk about the 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 cost um, of the of the ads, which the town is subsidizing the, uh, significantly for the cost of the placement of the ads, um, get your comments to the staff or as quickly as I mean, before the 28th so we can incorporate them in the discussion. This is something on a, it'll be deliberation so we can't talk to each other about it because of the open meeting law, <laughs> but you can, you can pass your thoughts on to the staff and that can then be shared with us through the, uh, at, at the meeting. So I would yep. encourage you to do that. And, because it's unfortunate to have an administrative meeting with half the permanent members of the, the full members of the committee that uh, can't be a, can't be there. So, um, but I think it's also important that we do have this meeting for Sarah. Um, I want to first of all, I want to welcome her to the board. Um, she's she's appointed as an as a associate member, uh, and uh, we could really use the help. As you can see, we need we need more, not fewer people as ZBA board members. So. Sarah, thank you for volunteering to do this. And um, for all of you, if you know somebody else who wants to serve on the board, rope them in and tell them what a great fun, what great fun it is. Lie a little bit to get them on board. Um, but it's an important thing. And we really, um, and I appreciate the effort that all of you put into it. I know the town does. And I think we do something good for the town uh, by, by doing this. So see if you can help us help us find other people who are willing to do the same thing. Um, any other questions about upcoming meetings, about that, the, uh, the pandemic uh, in-person um, requirements on, or lack of requirements from the state? And I guess that's going to apply to everybody, right, Rob? I mean, every, every board in town will have to deal with this. We'll either have to start meeting in person. And will, it, will, will the public still have zoom or is that up to the, that hasn't been decided yet uh yeah you can answer yeah you know it's unlikely because um it's really complicated and um requires a lot of staff effort to run the hybrid meeting uh -huh. so you know the the it department has to be you know on site for it to occur and available and you know at, at least last you know up until this point the town manager and the council have decided that only council meetings would be held that way, uh, but but probably not because of the, the time that it would take and staff resources to, to actually operate it. Okay, well, for one, I've, I'm question of resources is not something we can determine here, but I can say in terms of value to the town and value of public comment, the hybrid meeting going forward would make a lot of sense. And I can't judge the budget implications of that. That's, that's not my not my portfolio, but it makes a lot of sense and that it gives uh, an opportunity for feedback from the from um, town residents in a safe way for some, uh, that's a consideration, and also in a convenient way, which is the other consideration for some people. And, and I don't think we want to, in these times, I don't think we want to make it hard for people to, to uh, to participate in their in their government and i think this hybrid did, did that well we volunteered to serve on the board and so maybe it's incumbent upon us to appear in person and appear in um, and i wouldn't mind having a meeting um, chairing a meeting of my fellow board members all in one room it'd be nice for a change but um that's our responsibility we took that on ourselves but it, to whatever degree you can communicate that to the budget um powers that be um, it's, I, I find it would be a good use of, of town funds to incorporate the hybrid meeting in the future. Ms. Parks. I also think that we should get free parking permits for board members in whatever way you want to do that, but it's a real <laughs> hassle to have to park, try to find parking, and then make sure that you've got enough money in the meter while you're in the <laughs> meeting. I've gotten many messages while I'm in the meeting, my phone gets dinged. 
So <laughs> um, that would be like, that would, I, I think that would be a very nice thing. Voting awards to do that as well. So <laughs> for those I of second, us who volunteer a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, second, I second that. Although I walked in meetings, but I understand exactly <laughs> how tough that no, is. I, I'll park yeah, at your house. To. That. We're all going to park at your house. <laughs> you, you can come down to come down to one fifty one Amity and park in up front, and then we got some places in the back. Um, but also Gilbert, uh, John Gilbert is close by, and so is Dylan. So we could find some places for everybody, it's still within walking distance for all the cars, until they get you uh, free parking for the meetings, Tammy. All right. Anything else people want to discuss? Well, I hope you all have not. I hope you all have a good um, rest of July. Perhaps you can, um, enjoy, Tammy, I hope you can get, actually get on your vacation in New Hampshire and feel better. Um, enjoy Wellfleet. Dylan, I don't know where you're going, but wherever it is, I hope it's a good time. Going up to uh, Baxter State Park in Maine. No. Uh, oh, yeah. No light Mount pollution. So, Mount Katahdin. Awesome. Yep, right there. So nice. yep. up there for five days, just going to sit, look at the stars, maybe do a little bit of hiking. I don't know. But <laughs> it's a great hike to the top of Mount Katahdin. Yep. yep. Excited for it. It's a great hike to do when you're younger. It's a little harder to do it now. <laughs> I'm glad I did it a long time ago. All right. Have fun, Dylan. We'll do. So okay, the next meeting will all. be July 28th. July 28th. Thank you. Bye. See you guys. Oh, wait, wait. We can do a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Yes. Thank you very much. I, I'm so anxious to be done with this. We're going to be, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not even eight o'clock yet. Look at that. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I moved. <laughs> is there a second? Second. All right. This is not debatable. All those in favor signify by responding to my question. Chair votes aye. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. All right. Motion carries. Bye, folks. See you, guys. See you all. Bye. Have a great time. <laughs>